Uh, so, this, our first question, loaded guns making their way through airport security has been a big headline in Northwest this year with Senator Jeff Wilson, arrested in Hong Kong. Can you comment on how TSA is making sure guns are not making their way through checkpoints and the consequences for passengers? That's a great question. So, <clears throat> we always ask travelers to know what the contents of their bag is. So, when they come to the checkpoint, they don't bring a prohibited item, and that does include guns. Here at SeaTac, we're getting ready to break a record for the number of guns that travelers have brought in their carry-on luggage. And that is not a record that we wanted to break. And so I just ask people, if you're a gun owner and you're gonna travel with your firearm, please make sure that you follow the steps. The steps are, make sure your gun is unloaded, remove that magazine from it. You need to place it in a, a hard-sided case, lock it up with at least two locks and put it in your check luggage. It's so simple. It makes you wonder why anybody's bringing any guns to the checkpoint because they have never been allowed pre 9-11 and post 9-11. The way TSA is making sure that guns don't get through the security checkpoint is we screen every piece of carry-on luggage. Every traveler is screened, every item they bring to the checkpoint is screened. And we all know that routine x-ray screening process, that's what you stand in line for. And so we ask people to make sure that they're not bringing prohibited items because that slows down the line. But what really slows it down is when someone does bring a firearm because that requires a law enforcement notification. Now TSA will notify law enforcement when firearms are found in carry-on luggage. So you're going to have that contact there. Uh, you're probably going to miss your flight. And TSA is going to uh, issue a very hefty civil penalty of up to $15,000 for every time a person brings a gun to the checkpoint. We look at the circumstances surrounding that. There's really no upside to doing that. So if you're planning to travel with that firearm, do so properly. And uh, are most of those firearms, those firearms coming through the checkpoint, is, are those mostly accidents and people getting holding on to them or something? Well, I will say people say they forgot their firearm was in their carry-on luggage, but I would like to remind people the number one rule of firearm ownership is to know where your gun is at all times. So that is not an acceptable excuse. Another sort of shocking thing is that over 90% of firearms that are brought to the checkpoint in carry-on luggage are loaded. And the vast majority of those have one in the chamber ready to go. So with that being said, that should be enough to trigger, pun intended, to the firearm owners that they shouldn't have their gun in their carry-on bag rolling around in the bottom of that bag completely unattended. We don't want any incidents here at the airport. We have a great law enforcement present, TSA officers, looking for these items to make sure that there are no incidents. But it really starts with the traveler and the personal responsibility not to bring that firearm. Saying you forgot is not an excuse. Great. Uh, next question. Uh, TSA PreCheck has seen a significant boost in enrollment. How big is the increase and will members face longer times? That's a great question. So TSA uh, pre-check enrollment has uh, been going at a record pace. We've had more people enroll this year than in any previous year. We're more than 17 million members. For those who uh, are a member, you know it's a five-year membership and then you can re-enroll online. It's super convenient. But the good news is, is we have more pre-check eligible passengers. We're able to, we're able to open more pre-check lanes. Uh, the experience for pre-check for a traveler is much quicker. You're not taking off your shoes. You're not removing your electronics. You're leaving your travel size liquids in your bag. You're essentially putting your belongings on the conveyor belt, walking through a metal detector, and that is very quick. It's when we get to that general screening process where you're removing your shoes, taking things out of your bag, using multiple bins to get your items through the security checkpoint. That slows things down. So if you travel even twice a year, it's worth it to enroll and know that we at TSA every day have a predictive number of the people who will be eligible for TSA PreCheck, and that's how we know how many lanes to keep open. We would welcome people to continue to enroll in the program. There are more than 400 enrollment centers nationwide, so there's one near you. Go ahead and take that step today. You do it today, and you may have it by the time you're ready for your return trip from Thanksgiving, but definitely by the time we get to the end of the year holidays. And this question, uh, are there specific TSA tips for mm -hmm. at a SeaTac that travels here to know about? Is this, is this airport different than sure. other big cities? Yeah, so let me start by saying that the, the holidays in Seattle are busy 
but our busiest season is really during the summer months and that's not a surprise the weather's so beautiful there's so many things to do here the cruise ship season but we still see tens of thousands of people traveling during the holiday so on the day before thanksgiving we're looking at about 65,000. normally saturdays are very quiet for us here at the airport but this year will be different the saturday after thanksgiving we're looking at about 61,000 people going through the security checkpoints but on sunday that number is going to increase to about 65,000. Monday will also be busy, so just know if you're traveling any of those three days, you're going to need to arrive early, you're gonna to need to arrive prepared. Now, the other thing I want people to know is that the early mornings are the busiest here at SeaTac. Starting at 5 a.m., you're gonna see literally hundreds of passengers streaming into the checkpoint every second, and that's all of the checkpoints here. Look at the wait times that are posted, but know this, TSA will have the lane staff, will have all of our workers in the checkpoint working. Some of our administrative staff is helping with those non-security functions to get our uniformed and security certified officers working in the checkpoint to keep things going. So we're here for you, we're expecting you, we know it's gonna be busy. But if I had to offer some helpful tips, the first one would be to unpack your bag before you pack it. Make sure you don't have items in there left over from a previous trip so that you don't accidentally bring a prohibited item. The second thing is if you are eligible for TSA pre-check, you have enrolled. Go into your airline reservation and check to make sure your known traveler number is correct. Make sure your name is spelled correctly. Your date of birth is correct. You'd be surprised at how often it's not. People entered that in haste and then they have a, an incorrect piece of data and that makes them not eligible for pre-check. So do that today ahead of flying. And the last thing that I re would recommend is if you're gonna be traveling with any of those delicious Thanksgiving leftovers, make sure they're allowed through the checkpoint. Anything that's a solid, meats and cheeses, baked goods, all of those are allowed in unlimited quantities. It's the items that are a liquid. So those special gravies that maybe your grandmother makes or special sauces, those types of things, they need to be in quantities of 3.4 ounces or less. Otherwise, put them in your check baggage. If you check those, be careful because <laughs> we don't want that to get all over your suitcase. You'll be wearing those for the next few days. So just make sure that you know how to travel with the leftovers that you're bringing back with you. And the last thing I would say is, you know, we're in a season of gratitude, whether you're heading out or returning home, go ahead and give a thank you to our officers. They're giving up their holiday. They're working during that time when you're traveling to see your family and friends, and they would love to have a thank you from you. Got a couple more right here. Sure. All right. Uh, I think you already said it, where, uh, mm -hmm. but just again, what are the most common mistakes passengers make during the holiday season? Yeah, the most common mistake that passengers uh, make is they don't allow enough time. When things are busy at the airport, and they arrive, maybe they have trouble finding a parking place or the bag check lines are a little bit longer, so they're adding to the stress level. Then they come to the checkpoint during a peak time and they see a line. Now know that the lanes are open and we're processing the passengers as quickly as we can, but sometimes the number of people who need to be screened will exceed the capacity of a checkpoint for a while. That adds to the stress. So don't do that to yourself. Arrive early. There's nothing wrong with getting to your gate, sitting down, taking a deep breath, maybe having a cup of coffee or something before you board that plane. So that's the number one mistake that people make. The second mistake that they make is if they're in the general screening lanes and they need to remove items from their carry-on luggage, they're in the bottom of their suitcase and they're gonna find themselves digging through their bag to find that iPad or they're gonna be digging through their bag to find uh, maybe their laptop. Don't do that. Make sure it's easily accessible. And the last thing that we see very frequently is people bring oversized liquids to the checkpoint. That ubiquitous bottle of water. Bring an empty bottle, fill it up in the filling stations on the sterile side, because anytime you have a, a liquid like that or any other type of prohibited item, it causes a bag check. That slows it down for you, everybody else behind you, because the officer's gonna have to check your bag for that. Now, the good news is if you don't know how to travel with something, TSA has a lot of resources available for travelers. We have an account called Ask TSA on Facebook Messenger and on Asks. You can send in the picture of an item, you can describe it, and our staff will be working the entire holiday weekend, and they'll be able to tell you the best way to travel with that. So it just takes a few minutes to prepare, and then when you come to the airport, you'll be right through because you're traveling with your items properly. Great. Uh, what are the weirdest things you've seen a passenger try to bring into an airport? Well, <laughs> today, just on my X account, at 
TSA underscore Pacific, you're gonna see a loaf of bread. And in that loaf of bread was a knife. Someone had stuck a knife in the middle of the loaf of bread because they wanted to take their knife through the checkpoint and they thought the x-ray wouldn't detect that. Well, of course it did. And uh, that's getting a lot of play on social media because it's an example of what people try to do to conceal items. Let me tell you that traveler's gonna get a civil penalty for trying to conceal a prohibited item. But that being said, use that as a reminder that you shouldn't bring those items through the checkpoint. They, you know, is, is a knife unusual? No, we see a lot of knives. Is a knife and a loaf of bread unusual? Absolutely, don't do that. So we see those things. The other types of unusual things that we see are martial arts items. So we see a lot of throwing stars, brass knuckles, maybe brass knuckles with a knife in it, uh, lots of prohibited items all in one. So that's something that we'll see regularly. Sometimes we see other types of items that maybe people think would be uh, okay to bring through the checkpoint. Sometimes it's sporting equipment items. Keep in mind that nothing is allowed into the cabin of the aircraft that could be used as a bludgeoning item or a weapon. So go ahead and use the resources TSA has available for the travelers to make sure you can travel with it. And of course, sometimes we'll even see things like live pets. We had a turtle recently in Spokane that someone brought to the checkpoint. They tried to conceal that. Now the traveler learned that they actually could bring their little turtle through the checkpoint, but when they tried to hide it, that's what drew our attention. So once again, just check to see if what you're bringing is allowed through the checkpoint. And if it is, just present it for screening. That will make things uh, easier for everybody. But what fun for us to find that little cute turtle. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> never, never a you never know, right? <laughs> uh, this is a longer one again. Uh, sure. Earlier this month, Congress ended the threat of a government shutdown by passing a temporary funding package. Sure. In the new year, lawmakers will face a budget fight once again, which means TSA paying would be in jeopardy again. What is, uh, what's your reaction, and are there any contingency plans that TSA has for government shutdown? We at TSA are seasoned veterans of government shutdowns, and here's how that works. So because our employees are considered essential, they are required to work, even if they're working without pay. Fortunately, the government and the Congress has always authorized back pay, but it is a difficult situation for our officers. Uh, we also get, during those periods of time, a lot of community support. People understand the important role that they play, that it's our officers who allow them to be able to travel and so there's a lot of kindness that is shown to our workforce during these difficult times you know that's a political fight that's happening sort of outside of what the agency does what we want the traveling public to know and during a shutdown would be that our officers will still be there doing the job that they are required to do when they signed up they always knew this was a possibility when they came to work here and so you know we don't like it when these things happen but it's really outside of our control but what the traveling public needs to know is our officers will still be working in the security checkpoint as will the vast majority of employees for the Department of Homeland Security because we do fill essential ro roles to keep the the country safe but uh, yeah it can be a difficult situation. Great. And one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, TSA recently added new technology as security to yes. try and speed up security lines. How is that going? Yeah, so we have a couple of technologies that uh, travelers will encounter this holiday season. Number one is what we call credential authentication technology. That scans your driver's license. That unit is then um, connected to the internet and it is uh, able to look at the t uh, database of ticketed travelers over the next 24 hours. It pulls up the flight information of the traveler. It it pulls up the type of screening that traveler is eligible for just by a scan of the driver's license or the passport. It's a really great tool for our officers because it presents the information on screen in the same place, unlike boarding passes where it could be anywhere on the boarding pass, and it's much quicker. It's also a higher level of security because that unit can also detect any IDs that are fraudulent. And so that's a great tool. We use that throughout the airport here at SeaTac, and we will see it also across the country. The second type of technology that we're using is called computed tomography scanners. They generate a 3D x-ray image of the contents of the bag, giving our officers a clearer view of whatever is inside that bag. We have some of those units here at SeaTac as well. What's really good for travelers when those units are in use is that they do not have to remove their electronics or their travel size liquids because the officer can get a really good view on that 3D image. And so that anytime a traveler does less, it makes it faster. So if you're being screened through that, listen to what the officer tells you because you might be able to save some time. 
TSA is going to continue embracing these technologies because they provide additional security tools and additional efficiencies that keep things moving through the checkpoint. And ultimately, that's our goal. We know people want to get through security quicker. We want them to get through security quicker, but we'll never compromise security to make that happen. So we'll rely on technology to help us have those additional capabilities. But it's an exciting time as we evolve and start using these technologies. They are not only here at SeaTac, but they're across the country. So when people are, are, are traveling either out of SeaTac or coming back from another airport, they're going to see them in use and get used to seeing them because we're going to continue investing in them. Great. Is there anything else I forgot to ask? Yeah, I would just say I always like to remind travelers, especially around the holidays, is only 50% of your travels start here at SeaTac where you may be familiar with sort of the layout and the, the process here, but you're gonna be coming back from an airport where maybe you're less familiar with that. Maybe you don't know when their peak times are. So make sure you allow plenty of time, make sure you familiarize yourself with that so that your return trip can be just as smooth as we have here at Seattle.